All right, hello everybody. Um, gonna explain the uh, observatory automation. I've got it fully working now, and uh, I can just control it from anywhere. There's an internet connection. You can see the shutter opening. I pushed a button on my phone here. And uh, I'm not gonna go in depth about you know every little detail, like how I modeled the, the, the encoder wheel or everything. We'll just kind of briefly go over everything and talk about Make sure it's not going to explode here. <laughs> it does. It sounds really bad. Okay, no, it is working. Um, <clears throat> I've never, I've never heard it from out here before, so it's okay. But yeah, I'll just briefly go through the process and this, everything I did in here. You could actually use the uh, the shutter mechanism to control a roll-off roof if you're building a roll-off observatory. So this is this will all be really applicable to uh, whatever kind of observatory you're building. So let's take a look inside and uh, we'll, I'll talk about how we, we did it here. This is the uh, Lesvi dome net system. Uh, a man from Belgium, uh, his first name is Pierre, I can't remember his last name, but he's from Belgium and uh, he uh, designed this system and he, he, he basically made the software for a, uh, a controller board. And uh, it's this right here. It is the Velman P8055 uh, USB computer interface board. And he wrote software for this and it uses these relays to control the dome. You just need simple uh, reversible DC motors on the dome and uh, then you hook your PC up to this and it'll completely control your uh, your uh, dome. You know, you, can, you know I just did that by pushing a button on my phone you can control the rotation and uh, it's completely automated. So first we'll talk. First we'll talk about the shutter, and uh, it's it's really simple. And when I first started thinking about how how can I control the shutter, um, when I was just kind of tossing ideas around in my own head, um, of of course I knew this had all been figured out before, and uh, you know I was just trying to reinvent the wheel while I was bored. But anyways, um, the the way we control the shutter with only two contact points. Because you can't have, you know, you can't have all these contacts here for a bunch of sensors and things. So all you need to do is put power to the motors. And then we've got a relay box over here with two reed switches, magnetic reed switches, um, that sense the end of the travel. And when you give, when you feed current to the motor in one direction, it'll travel until it triggers one of those reed switches. And then it switches a relay here, which won't let any more current flow through in that direction and it will only take current in the opposite direction. So all you have to do is feed current to this thing in a specific orientation for a specific amount of time and it completely controls the shutter. Um, what was that? A child. <laughs> a child. It sounded like a fart. But uh, so yeah that, that's how the shutter works and uh, I'll put the I'll put links to the schematic online. Um, and the way we control the polarity is through these relays down here, of course, that the, that the Velman board controls. Um, you have one relay that turns the power on and off and another one that flips the polarity to the motors. And uh, so, yeah, that's the shutter. And the, the way we uh, control the dome is we've got one, one reed switch here that's a magnetic switch that senses the home position. And then this is neat. This... Uh, I, th I modeled up and 3D printed this encoder wheel. And uh, it uses two optical sensors here and these holes. And it rides along the bottom of the dome and turns. And then as, as those beams get broken and then reconnected, it can tell how far the dome has traveled. Because, you know, it's got all these measurements and it knows how the diameter of this, how many holes there are, and the diameter of the dome. So I will put links in the description for the schematics, the models, and everything you need for uh, the system. And uh, it's really inexpensive. You know, these relays were a few bucks a piece. This, this board, I think, was $15. And I was a little bit surprised because what, 
I bought the board, it wasn't so much a USB interface board as it was a hundred pieces that needed to be soldered together into a USB interface board. So you'll need some soldering skills to build this. Then three zeros plus or minus 5%. This, this is a 10K resistor. But you could use this to control a roll off roof to, by just using the shutter system for the, for the roof. So that would be easy. So this system is inexpensive and all you need is a DC motor, have it geared to whatever kind of roof or observatory you've got. And then I use these relays to control the power to the motor. And you know, if you're, if you're not an electrical engineer or you don't have a lot of experience with this kind of stuff, it's going to take some studying. You'll have to like, you'll have to learn what a flyback diode is. I didn't know that until we started this. Uh, but yeah, the, a pretty steep learning curve if you're not used to this stuff. But all in all, it, it works really well. And uh, there's some troubleshooting involved, you know, with getting the the, the travel time, the, the measurements for all the wheels. You need to carefully measure all of your scope properties, like your, your distance, all your offset from the dome, the center of the dome. You need to measure all that so that a device hub can properly point the telescope or point the dome where it needs to be to keep the telescope in the uh, pointing out the shutter opening. But uh, all in all, it's it's working really well. I'm really happy with it. I've got a uh, I've got a clean 12 bolt 12 bolt. I've got a a queen 12 bolt power supply. I've got a clean. I've got 12. Oh, <laughs> slow down. Hold on. I want to get this done. <laughs> I've got a clean 12 volt power supply to uh, power the, the sensors and the board and everything. And then uh, I've got this ugly old 10 amp thing to run the motors because these motors are old and noisy and if they were all in the same power supply, it would interfere with the, uh, with the sensor. Uh, but that's about all there is to it. And uh, it's working really well. I, I've got to do some re-engineering on the shutter because it doesn't slide per it'll it'll work perfectly 50 times in a row and the 51st time it'll jam and derail itself and I can't figure out exactly why so there's a little bit of troubleshooting left to do but we've had some uh, some pretty clear nights and some really successful uh, imaging sessions but uh I've got I've got some data that we gathered last night um, cooking and the computer right now so we'll go take a look at that thank you my lovely wife has been shooting the film with the with the extremely heavy gimbal, and the extremely heavy belly, and extreme. She's very pregnant. Do you want to see how pregnant my oh wife my is? <laughs> we are about to have a baby. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, she's helping me shoot the video. But yeah, let's go look at the data. And uh, all I have is a red and blue channel, so we're going to synthesize a green channel and take a look at it just for fun. All right, in the house now. This is. This is the data we got last night. Uh, this is the first time that the observatory has been fully automated where it just worked all night. There were a few nights where I used it, where I tried to use it, but there was some kind of error. There was a, a bug in the software where if the telescope accidentally got disconnected, the dome would just start spinning. And I, I woke up at night and thought, golly, I wonder how everything's going out there. I look outside and the dome's just going... <laughs> I mean, there, there, there was definitely a lot of debugging, but this is the first night where everything worked great. Now, this is not a complete image. Um, I, I completed the red channel. I got six hours on the red channel, you know, did all the flats and calibrations. Red channel was great, uh, but I only got like two hours on the blue channel, no flats for the blue channel, and no green channel. So I took the blue channel, used the red flats on the blue channel, then use the blue and the red to I just kind of did you know pick the halfway point between the blue and the red and use that for green so this is uh, a synthetic color image using um, some some sparse data but that being said it looks pretty pretty good uh, yeah this is the iris nebula obviously um, looking pretty good so I am excited to finish off the blue channel, finish off the green channel, and do a proper job on this. Uh, 
But yeah, this is, you know, first light with the fully automated dome. Um, just need to button it up now, build the door, build all the rest of the shelving, uh, get the, the real computer. I'm still using my laptop out there. I've got a, I've got a more powerful computer to, to put out there that will uh, also do, I'll have, you know, a security system, cameras, weather monitoring and stuff going all the time. <clears throat> And uh, yeah, a few more bugs to work out, but overall the observatory is working great. And this is first light from Fully Automatic Observatory, uh, the Iris Nebula. Uh, please enjoy. Clear skies, everybody.